In honor of Mental Health Awareness Month, we're dedicating May's episodes to treatments for depression. Last week, we covered cognitive behavioral therapy, and today we're covering psilocybin. Can mushrooms help our mood? That's the topic of this week's healthcare triage. We did an episode on psychedelic drugs as treatments around four years ago. As we mentioned in that episode, research with Schedule I drugs like psilocybin is really hard to do in the United States. That's because in order to use these drugs in research, labs have to get approval from the Drug Enforcement Administration, which isn't an easy process and requires things like inspections and money. Thankfully, some U.S. researchers have persisted, and researchers outside of the United States have produced data as well. While we don't yet know exactly what happens to a brain on shrooms, fMRI studies suggest that the drug deactivates the medial prefrontal cortex, which is involved in executive function, and slows down the amygdala, which is involved in threat response and other emotions. Other fMRI work suggests that shrooms increase neural connectivity. All of these are plausible ways in which they could alleviate depression, but we still don't know anything for sure. We don't even know for sure that they can alleviate depression. The literature is mixed and not overwhelmingly convincing, which is what we're here to talk about. To the research. A randomized clinical trial published in JAMA Psychiatry in 2020 examined the effect of an eight-week intervention that included two day-long psilocybin administration sessions in adults with a diagnosis of major depressive disorder. The sessions were conducted a mean of 1.6 weeks apart, with the dose in the first session being 20 milligrams per 70 kilograms, and the dose in the second session being 30 milligrams per 70 kilograms. These are considered moderately high and high doses, respectively. The trial was conducted in the context of supportive psychotherapy, which included preparatory and follow-up meetings and physical and emotional support during the psilocybin sessions. The control group was monitored for eight weeks and then given the same treatment. Before we can cover the results, we just want to note that the sample size was extremely small, with only 13 individuals in the treatment group and 11 in the control group. It's very important that we consider the results with that in mind. Depression severity was measured at baseline, and then again at week one and week four following the intervention. The mean depression score for all participants at baseline was 22.8, which dropped to 8 and 8.5 in the treatment group at weeks one and four, compared to the control group, whose scores were 23.8 and 23.5. In the treatment group, a rapid decrease in mean depression scores was seen after the first session and was still present at the four-week follow-up. 17 participants showed a clinically significant response to the intervention, while 13 participants experienced remission. Importantly, a 2020 systematic review and meta-analysis of psilocybin clinical trials for depression and anxiety in individuals with life-threatening diseases found evidence for publication bias in the current literature. This is an issue for many scientific disciplines, and it basically means that there are likely studies out there that found no effect, but they were never published because it's hard to get studies published that don't show an effect. This is bad for science, and shameless plug, we just released a whole podcast series about stuff like this, and you should check it out. But anyway, a meta-analysis of four trials examining the effect of psilocybin on anxiety and depression also reported a potential risk for bias. However, we did find a trial that reported negative results. It was published in 2021, and it was a phase two, double-blind, randomized controlled trial comparing psilocybin to escitalopram, an SSRI, in patients with major depressive disorder. The sample size was on the lower end for a phase two trial with just 59 people total. During a six-week trial period, patients in the psilocybin group received two separate 25 milligram doses three weeks apart, plus a daily placebo, while patients in the other group received two separate one milligram doses three weeks apart, plus daily escitalopram. The trial reported no significant difference in depression scores between these two groups. Interestingly, a study that just came out this year, 2022, with one of the same authors reports a 64% reduction in depression severity after three weeks when compared to the escitalopram group. Both of these studies are reporting on the same trial, but they're reporting on depression scores from two different measurements used in that trial, one significant, one not. Maybe the difference is due to the test used to measure depression, but the first study we mentioned in this episode used an entirely different test from these two, so it's hard to know. As is the case with many of the topics we discuss here, the literature is full of studies that are too small, too different to compare, or lacking in some other way that makes it impossible to draw reliable conclusions. 
It would be nice if psilocybin research were easier to do so that we could work our way toward a solid answer. In the meantime, the best we can say is that there's no clear answer at the moment, but it definitely warrants more research. Hey, if you enjoyed this episode, you might enjoy this previous episode on cognitive behavioral therapy for treating depression. We always appreciate it when you like the video and subscribe to the channel and head on over to patreon.com slash healthcare triage where you can help support the show, make it bigger and better. We'd especially like to thank our research associates, James Glasgow, Joe Sevitz, Edward Lillehome and Brian Nam, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral Sam.